नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स गुड आफ्टरनून विनोद जी नमस्कार वेरी वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ आवर लिसनर्स व्यूअर्स एंड फ्रेंड्स वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग द सीरीज ऑफ ओड्स ऑफ जॉन कीट्स व्हिच यू हैव बीन लिसनिंग एंड विनोद जी टुडे व्हिच ऑफ हिज फेमस ओड्स आर यू विथ यस इट इज ओड ऑन ग्रेशियन अर्न oh the name itself is kamarsam yeah earn uh, earn is earn 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 is asthi kalash asthi kalash in uh, in your languages container containing the bones mortal remains yes and grecian that is related to ancient greece uh, keats was always fascinated you know by greek, greek mythology yes this uh, hellenism which hellenism. is called hellenism the yeah. impact of hellenism is very much there in keats poetry hmm so and this... it is said that he had visited british museum ah. and there he chanced to look at a beautiful urn that was 2000 year old and it was made up of marble and on the outer layer of this marble urn yeah. he could see the different pictures carvings carvings and these pictures gave rise to wide range of thoughts that he has presented in this poem otherwise also you know ji when we uh, contemplate of a urn or even after somebody's death we keep the bones for some days yes. in a container then also our thoughts become somber we yes. reflect on the permanence or impermanence of life and many other things and we suddenly become aware of the transitoriness of life yes our consciousness is heightened so to say to give you a personal example venod ji when our father died way back in 1998 mm-hmm. and we collected his ashes and put them in a bag to be carried home i carried that bag for a while and i suddenly uh, thought maybe you can call it epiphany or something like that is this all which remains of a person they, they wrote the name also on the bag and i was taken aback that the name signifies this mortal remains at unconscious level at that time each one of us is reminded of that ultimate reality that finally we will be leveled to dust we will be nothing but handful of dust dust as the words dust to the nest and this is the hallmark of great poetry friends it reverberates you uh, uh, with you it resonates with you at many levels it gives rise to many forgotten memories right and one of the central metaphors of john keats odes is contrast between permanence of art yes and short lived nature of life yeah so this contrast is more vividly conspicuously presented in this poem ode on grecian or and all of us uh, know basically all of us know that our life is impermanent it is evanescent temporary all of us in a way vinod ji have been trying to escape this impermanence permanence and art is one of the potent ways to do so there are other ways religion uh, then fantasies of immortality and all the mythologies and what not but art, but art has the potential to capture the beauty and the happiness of moment yes and that is preserved of course artistically yeah. but it becomes immortalized and that is the basic argument uh, throughout this ode yes if we come to the first stanza first stanza is a kind of introduction, introduction where he yeah. describes the various pictures that are carved on the marble ur and even before that he terms he, uh, on as the un, still unreal. unravished bride of quietness fostered child of silence and, and slow, slow time. time thou art silvan historian no we are simply <laughs> amazed transported into a different amazed world at this wonderful uh, you know uh, phrases with yeah. which he describes the beauty of earth unravished bride of quietness yeah. No, the, the, he evokes that beauty of unravished bride a, a girl who has just married but her marriage is yet to be consummated, consummated yeah and this urn is unravished bride of whom quietness because it has been for last 2000 years quietness has preserved it quietness has not violated her 
it has not destroyed this earth and that is how she is unravished bride of quietness and fostered child of silence and slow, slow time. time who has preserved the earth? Yeah. silence the slow time the time passes very slowly and it is preserved it's, it has preserved this earth. see here we need to understand what we say everything is ultimately destroyed in the course of time but time has not destroyed the earth it has Perhaps preserved the earth. time uh, preserves it and time earth is not destroyed by time rather it is embellished by time more and more layers become apparent as the time passes well urn here also symbolizes art yes yes urn is a piece of art basically yeah and then he goes on describing the various pictures, various pictures. that he develops in the subsequent uh, stanzas. Stanza, yeah. There is the picture of, uh, of a boy, couple. couple boys who are trying to catch, uh, pursue, uh, pursue uh, their uh, beloved uh, maidens. She is trying to escape. And then there is a boy <coughs> playing upon uh, a flute. pipe flute, studying under the green tree. Okay. And, and then there is, is a priest uh, who, uh, who is at the head of the procession and the empty town from where these priests and the people must have come come for the sacrifice yes so all these three images are subsequently developed and convey something right the instant <laughs> second and third yeah he elaborately develops this uh, picture of a boy who is trying to capture uh, his beloved and she is trying to escape uh, from his grasp yeah and this is a beautiful picture of love and he says that in in real life love may be short-lived you try to pursue someone you get your beloved kiss is materialized love is materialized and the passion is over but here it has been frozen in time so to say the lover will continue to chase the beloved she will continue to struggle out of his escape yes. and this will go on it will not reach the consummation point and so it will not be dissipated always it will be fresh and it young will be fresh and young because as they say anticipation is always better than realization and then he put addresses this boy don't regret yeah because you're not getting your love don't regret because but always for, it is going to be there forever she will be young and you will be pursuing her Yes, so he brings out this uh, this fundamental contrast between the permanence of art and the short-lived nature of life. And perhaps he is also indicating the most important moments are the moments of pursuit, not of obtaining a thing. Yes. Rather, pursuing a thing is most in, more important than actually getting a thing. Exactly, that is also hinted at. Yeah. And then there is a boy who is playing upon a flute. Uh, under a under a tree yeah. and he says that this tree which is painted on the marble it will not turn yellow in the season of autumn yeah it will not shade its leaves ever it will always be green and in real life person is tired of playing upon the flute but this boy this musician who is who sits or stands under a tree he will never be tired of playing upon music yeah. and, and then very famous lines line, come. heard melodies are sweet but unheard more uh, sweeter unheard sweet unheard sweeter yeah that, that, that is something okay. really great and the fourth stanza uh, de is devoted to the, the description of the of mysterious the priest sacrifice scene he is leading leading a procession right and they perhaps they are going to sacrifice a small goat uh, at the uh, at the altar and then there is an empty town situated at the foot of a foot of a citadel. And there's right? a deserted town. Perhaps all the people who have come to the sacrifice, they are the inhabitants of that town. They yes. have come there. And but we will not know. Word says we will not know why the town is desolate. Yes. And these people will these people will never come back because always they will be uh, uh, seen in the act of going to the altar. Yeah. In the uh, yeah. And here, Vinodji, yes. if I contrast this fourth stanza with the second and third hmm. second and third stanzas depict the anticipation of love hmm. it's a pleasant thing good thing here by contrast the sacrifice if you if you come to that goat the goat will never be sacrificed but it will be always in the dread of getting sacrificed or the people will always be there for the sacrifice we, we are going to sacrifice it but it will never materialize so this is also frozen in time yes everything is frozen everything in time everything is frozen in time an art so either it is you know happiness or it is the dread it is it is at its, at its pinnacle 
before it is actually realized right so that that is precisely keats wants to convey right that intensity of that uh, penultimate moment yeah penultimate, penultimate, moment, penultimate yes. moment before something happens yes so th th this is something really really great to capture it in poetry and that to in a lyrical way the and last just uh, to give you uh, one uh, some some analogy is from real life you know as i said anticipation is always better than realization all of us know through our practical experiences once a thing has been consumed or consumed rather it diminishes in the value uh, what is called post orgasmic uh, you know uh, climb down that is always regretted isn't it yeah no definitely the viewers are taken to the altogether different realm yeah. where they are thinking of the post orgasmic or orgasmic, or orgasmic uh, uh, period right yeah. there and everybody knows that how that uh, you come down from yeah. the pinnacle of great happiness or the bliss and gradually you come back to the real world because when you indulge in that uh, that ultimate uh, uh, point of the pleasure right then you are taken to the altogether new realms of uh, of life so we, it is a matter of experience yeah. basically and even orgasm slightly precedes the ejaculation it is not coterminous with the ejaculation it precedes it by a fraction of second maybe. and again it's not something uh, uh, confined uh, to the physical, to the physical domain of if you are emotionally yeah. involved if you are intellectually involved and to go a step ahead, um, ahead if you are spiritually or artistically involved in the process and the person it will take you altogether to a new heights right the, uh, it will take you to the territory that you never visited earlier yeah and be tajasso saave manzil lagar zere qadam mere dil mein jist ju ka hausla reh jayega ha yeah so coming to the so, last stanza of 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 this poem he says you are sylvan historian that phrase needs to be needs to be explained because there are the pictures of greenery right yeah, yeah. and that is why sylvan and urn is a historian because it, it has been there for last 2000 years yes. and therefore it is telling us the great history of greek civilization as well and that is why poet calls it a sylvan historian and towards the end of this and poem you will be there he addresses the urn you were there you will be there in the different times as well so he emphasizes upon the immortality of the urn because all these pictures the picture of the boys uh, pursuing uh, their beloved these young beautiful girls the boy playing upon the uh, flute the green tree the priest all these things are continue to be there they will they will remain there forever they are not subject to decay and then but what does it all tell us the poet in the last lines comes up with a very famous message and he puts it in the mouth of the urn urn speaks back to us not only to us but also to the posterity and it says beauty is truth truth beauty all that is you know on earth and all you need to know he says that is the only thing that you should try to know on the earth but these it's, are the most famous lines in the poetry beauty is truth and truth, truth beauty we are simply taken away by the sheer beauty of this statement yeah but the moment you try to try to uh, think deeper actually what does it mean there have been endless commentaries on this endless commentaries some people have supported it some have vehemently opposed it but what do you think vinod ji what does it mean oh, it's very difficult to say if you say beauty is truth yeah very often the beauty is not truth yeah it is pretended it is short lived it is somehow uh, you know created created beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder yes why yeah. confine it to eyes in the senses of the beholder and uh, conversely truth is not always beautiful rather it is a yeah, bitter it is it is bitter so uh, what do you mean when you make the two things equivalent that is very controversial very right. very controversial and many critics have opined that the poet jumps to this statement without any supporting premises because uh, all uh, to, to that point if we look at the preceding stanza yeah. he is trying to emphasize uh, a contrast between art and life yeah. and all of a sudden he he uh, takes uh, over the, the role leap, of a preacher yeah this leap he takes and maybe avnath ji just a thought occurred to me maybe uh, is he trying to convey or does this statement convey by beauty he may mean this frozen beauty which is frozen, frozen in beauty time. of art if he is frozen beauty of art that is the truth that artistic is truth is the beauty. truth we can you know reface uh, yeah. this uh, this statement 
that artistic beauty is truth. truth. Yeah. And if the truth is to be preserved ever, it can be preserved in artistic in beauty. Artistic beauty only. Yes. So that is beauty is truth. And then truth beauty. Such a truth is beauty because it is equivalent. We have already said artistic, you know, beauty that is truth. So then conversely, truth beauty. Because art tries to encapture the lived experiences also. Isn't it? We have already yes. discussed in our beginning. Yes, because uh, 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 Aristotle has yeah. already said that the poetry is idealized reality. Idealized it has to be reality. beautiful. It cannot be as prosaic, mundane, like a real life. Yes. It is idealized. Idealized reality. And we yes. have also said that it is the prism of life. It's a prism of prism life. of life. Right, right. So in this way, beauty is truth. Artistic beauty is the, the that truth, uh, and then it also tries to capture the truth of the lived life, lived experience. Then it makes it beautiful. So you have to admit this saving gloss. Yeah. To when you try to understand this phrase. Yeah. Beauty is truth, and truth is beauty. Yeah. So artistic beauty is truth, and the truth of daily life is. Uh, converted into artistic uh, creations and thereby becomes beautiful. So Rajaji, we leave our viewers to ponder upon this statement, whether beauty is truth or truth is beauty. Yeah. How do you think about it? Write your comments yes. in the chat box. Namaskar. Thank we'll you. be back very soon with some other discussion. Take care. Namaskar.